Hello everyone, hope you are well. Today we are going to do a healing visualization along the lines of Celtic Reiki and we're going to visit the Isle of Avalon, King Arthur's resting place. So settle yourself down and some of you actually you may want to pause this video and go and get an apple and a knife because this is an apple meditation. So if you just pause the video now and run off and get yourself the apple and knife, when you get back we'll start. So I'd like everybody just to settle themselves down and this is a visualization that I would normally have done this time last week on the equinox but I was traveling to the Roman baths so I couldn't do it so we're going to do it now because we are still within the energies of equinox this is the perfect time for you to get into balance, to think about what you need ahead for winter. And so we will begin. So first of all, I want you to take a really deep breath in all the way down to your stomach and then breathe out anything you no longer need. Another breath in. Breathe out any annoyances and worries. And finally, a third breath in. Breathing out again anything that no longer serves you. And then settle your breathing down into its natural rhythm. I want you now to ground. I want you now to imagine a beautiful little apple tree. Cast your eyes down the trunk. And when your eyes come to rest at the earth, I want you to feel the roots growing out of your body, out of your feet, and merging with that of query. Apples of Avalon. Feel those roots grow deeper and deeper, pushing through the soil and past the rocks, deeper and deeper and deeper, until they journey down to the very center, to the very core of the earth where they find a giant stone to wrap themselves around and as you breathe the energy of the earth will travel up that root system will travel into your feet and up your legs and into the lower energy center in your abdomen called the lower dantian. It circulates, helping that energy center to spin. And then it travels up to the heart dantian, the middle dantian, which it opens and activates, spinning. And then it continues up to the yin tan point, the third eye, in the middle of your forehead, which it opens and activates. And then the rising energy spills out of the crown on the top of your head and flows back down you like a green and white fountain to rise again and spill out of you in a perpetual motion of regeneration, protection, 
and healing. So we've grounded, we've protected, we've opened up the energy centers. And I would now like you to imagine that we are pulling up in a car to the car park in Glastonbury. And we're going to walk up the tour. So as you get out of the car, I want you to imagine pulling your cloak around you or your coat. Saying hello to everyone watching here now as I just draw in the symbol of the yew tree. This is the distant healing symbol so that whoever comes in the future to watch this, eo, 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 can also gain benefit from this healing video. And then after you've pulled your cloak around you, note the color of it that will correspond with the energy center that you need to work on the most. And then in your mind's eye, I'd like you to call in your spirit guides and your angels. Feel them circling around you. You may feel a slight shift in your body as they come in close. And all together, we're going to turn around as a gentleman bangs his staff very loudly onto the tarmac. And we look and we meet Marvin, the Merlin of Britain. He beckons everybody to follow him we start walking up the road through the town past all of the crystal shops and the little cottages and the church and as we walk up we can't put our finger upon it but the visuals start to shift a little it becomes a little more oldie worldy We hear the staff scraping on the pavement with each step the Marvin takes. We cross a little bridge and then we reach the edge of the town, a gateway where the Marvin pauses. He then takes out a little bag with the standing stones in and he wanders through us and around us, shaking the energy off. says a final little cleanse. He then raises up a ram's horn and he blows a long, deep, resounding note. And out of the trees, from behind each one steps a figure a figure bedecked out in war garb, chainmail 
beautiful flowing cloaks, each one a knight with a long bow made out of you. Very famous long bows of England were made of yew tree and quivers full of arrows. Each one steps to the right hand side of you. So we now have a knight each in our entourage. Then the Murzin walks through the gateway and the mists move in around us and we notice that it is evening and the mists of Avalon curl and eddy and move. As we walk through the gateway and leave the oaks behind us, And the Marthin decides to walk straight up the tall. He decides not to walk around the labyrinth with its many turns, because that would take too long today. There are steps cut out into the tall quite big steps and there is a bench halfway up if you need a pause. So as you walk up, I want you to think about one thing that you really wish to stop doing one emotion that really gets you down and it could be something like anxiety it could be anger it could be a number of things maybe you overeat maybe you undereat maybe you're addicted to pepsi cola maybe you're addicted to cigarettes but think of one thing that you really wish to kick this winter. Maybe you're a workaholic. Maybe you don't know how to relax and do nothing. And as you rise higher and higher, we realize that we have walked through the mist and we are now in the evening light of a sunset. Your knight takes your hand or your arm and helps you up the steepest of the steps. Pausing any time you need to to catch your breath, it's a very steep hill. And soon you reach the top. You reach the top of the tower, St. Michael's Church. This is all that is left from it after a very big earthquake. And it is completely square and open. Night tells you because the hill is, it's not just a complete pinnacle, it is long and flat, stretching this way. And everybody lines up facing the west and the setting sun. The mist below us that is swirling around starts to thin a little bit and we notice that the land looks and feels slightly different. We're in a time warp here. 
As you look down, you see a river and a lot of water around this island. And there is a barge. A barge with a woman parting the mists. This is a longer barge this time because it holds the coffin of the Arthur heading out into the west to the Isle of the Ever Young. And you may be feeling, but I thought it was Avalon. Avalon and the Isle of the Ever Young are these mystical, translucent places that kind of move with our psyche. They are alongside our world, but not quite with us, on a different ethereal level. The Marvin bangs his staff again as he stands right in front of the tower. Everybody hushes up. And the Marvin says, you have come here today to shoot an arrow out to the west, to the element of the water. The flaming arrow that you are about to shoot is something that you wish to be rid of in your life. A situation, an emotion, whatever it is you don't need and that you struggle with, shoot your arrow hard and fast. Behind us, torchbearers with flaming torches start to walk up and down behind the line. Your knight gives you the longbow. I'm just going to draw the rune for longbow. From the Anglo-Saxon runes. Then he just shows you how strong and firm you need to pull that back. He takes an arrow. He dips it into the fire torch as the bearer walks past. And he gives it to you. <gasps> You're a little bit. Don't worry, he says. And he comes to stand behind you and help. Helps you pull back till it's very tight and then release. And you watch your arrow sail out. Down into the water. You breathe out. <sighs> Smile to yourself. You have released. Your arrow hit its mark in the water. Your spirit guide now turns to face you and starts brushing you down, brushing the energy of what you have just released. There, little one. You lift your arms up, you brush. Japanese dry brush all round your body. Down your 
front to your feet and over the back, brushing what it was, the energy that you fired away from you out of your aura. Okay, the Marvin bashes his staff again. Attention everyone, well done for releasing that which no longer serves you. Now we cross over to the east of the tour. Everybody shuffles over to the other side, facing the east, which is dark now. And you can see the myriad of stars starting to twinkle and to appear. The Marvin then says to you, And now we will face the East and think about all that we want to bring towards us. If there is too many things, just think of one thing that you wish for. One thing that will ease your conscience and ease your life a little bit. A gift. He then tells you to raise your hands up. Take a breath and then bring your arms down and take a step outward so that you create a star. And he tells you to smile to yourself and make that wish, make that petition. And you do this now, making that wish, that petition from your heart and from your solar plexus. And then he tells you to gather that chi towards you. Three times, gather that wish towards you. Gather that wish towards you. And bring it right into you. And smile to yourself. Take a breath in and relax. And now the Marvin bangs his staff again. Well done, he says, well done. Now everybody make a circle around the tower. So we all shuffle, spirit guides, knights, ancestors, and ourselves all make a giant circle around the tour. And as we look at the tour, suddenly it shifts, our perspective shifts and it becomes a lone standing stone. Some of us gasp. The Marvin then signals and the maids of Avalon, the priestesses bring in little baskets of apples and knives. 
and everybody collects an apple. Apple's name in the Irish Oem. Quert. Quert. Now the Murthin says it is time to consolidate that gift. He tells you to hold your apple, of course. I don't have one with me, because I didn't prepare. And he tells you to cut it across the equator. Would you do so now? So that your apple is in two halves. When you put your knife into your pocket or give it to your knight, and when you open your apple, you see a five-pointed star, sacred to Venus, like the shape that you created when you made your wish. The Mar then shouts again and he tells you to go and put half of the apple below the standing stone, acknowledging that that you shot away from you with the arrow. And then he tells you to go back into your place in the circle and sit down and start eating your apple half, thinking about how you are going to make those changes in your life this winter. Whatever it was that you wished to be gone and also to have brought to you, we do have to work for these, he says. It won't be totally easy to give up cigarettes. It won't be brilliantly easy to stop worrying about your bills. You have to retrain yourself emotionally and mentally. No pain, no gain, he says. It's very corny, but it's true. And now you start eating your apple half. Thinking about the changes you are going to make for the better. And as you look up into the darkening sky, you see Draco rising. But this time there is another dragon with it. The red drax, dragon of the Celts and the white dragon of the Saxons. Marthen once prophesied that the red dragon would be chased away, but it would return. And now in our modern times, both of these dragons dance together, respectfully giving each other the space. As the multicultural societies and humans spread across our beautiful sweet green earth, We can use the example of these dragons to live in harmony. Being respectful of our neighbours and the different cultures 
that we all have. And as you watch the dragons dance, you eat your apple. And as you are eating, you bring the grounding energy of the goddess and the god down into you, that energy of quet. Swallowing and tasting the beauty of the Isle of Avalon. And you ground by imagining those roots growing out of your shoulders and down past your hips and your knees. And down through your feet into the ground below you. Just gonna place my hands on your shoulders. Take a breath and, and out and release. And let the scene fade away, thanking your guides and helpers for the night. knowing that you have done a beautiful path-working meditation and healing still within the energies of Equinox, Alban, Ethren. At the time of bright lights on water. Bye-bye now and thank you for joining today. Blessings of the equinox to you and yours.